We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to present the first installment of a multi-part series showing the step-by-step -step construction of a Zenith Super Duty aircraft kit. While this video series is detailed and is designed to assist actual builders of the kit, you might find it enlightening from the standpoint that it shows how this aircraft goes together as well as what type of effort is needed to construct a kit of this kind. If you're not familiar with the Zenith Super Duty, visit Zenith's website for all of the details of this aircraft. Because of the step-by-step -step detailed presentation of this video, speed things up if you feel the pace is too slow using the YouTube speed setting controls. This first installment begins with the construction of the fuselage starting from the very beginning. And here are all of the parts laid out for the 750 series of aircraft. There's our skins rolled up and small parts in the cart and then all of the sheet metal formed parts on the bench. We are starting construction of the fuselage starting with the bottom skin. Here are all of the components used for that bottom skin. We see the two long longerons and then the many diagonal stiffeners and a few other miscellaneous parts. We have everything here we need except for the skin the bottom skin and we'll start on that now. Now our first step is to locate the bottom skin and then make sure we understand what side is the top and the easiest way to identify the top is to make sure that when sitting on the skin to the right side of the opening we should find all of the holes for the flap motor and those are the ones we see here. This needs to be on the right side of the skin based on you sitting on top of the skin and looking forward, the forward part being the wide part. Now we want to identify the two bottom rear fuselage longerons and lay them out near the edge of the skin. Now the easiest way to locate the proper ones is to simply match up the holes to the skin. Here's the front left of our bottom skin and note that all of the holes will match up all the way down the line and that way we can confirm that we have the proper longeron. Now we will end up putting the longeron on top of the skin and then we'll start clicking this in a few spots to hold it in place. And here we've placed a few clicos all along the distance and we did the same thing with the right side. We're all clicoed in place. Now we're going to go to the very rear of the skin and we need to add in the remaining piece which is going to get spliced along the edge and we're simply going to slide this in between Now behind the access hole, we're going to place a Z channel because of the shape is in that of a Z almost. And this is F19-2. And there's a series of holes in the skin. We're going to match them up 
the flange faces rearward and we'll just Clico this in place. And then we have another Z angle, 19-1, and this will follow the line of holes here and overlap our other Z channel. We also have another one which will go in a similar location on the other side, and we'll Clico those in place. Here we have the Z angles all clicoed in place. Now we'll focus towards the rear and I have placed three L angles at their appropriate locations. This would be 19-5 and then 19-7 and then 19-9 and we will clico these in place. Note that they sit on top of the longerons. They overlap. Now we're going to put in the diagonal L's. We got 19-4 and the holes will all line up very nicely. These don't overlap the corners at all. And then 19-6 and the holes line up very nicely. And then right behind it 19-8. And as we review all of our L angles and Z angles, we come up to the very front and we need to install our F4-8 gussets. These are pre-drilled pretty thick and they're going to go on top of the longeron and all the holes will match up and we'll clico this in place and then the same for the other side. You can't put them on wrong because the holes will only match up correctly if you have them set properly. Now with all of our parts clicked in place we want to flip the structure over and re from the other side and then come back and remove these clicos so that all of our clicos are in the opposite side. Now we are face down. All of the clicos from the other side have been removed and we want to go ahead and rivet using A4s only all of the Z's and L's that we placed on the other side plus all of the A4 size holes that are in the longerons, which is most of them except for those at the very front. Obviously it's easy to tell because your A4 rivet will only fit properly into the A4 holes. And if a rivet won't go through, you can always take your drill to help open up the hole so that it will fit properly. So towards the front, the first A4 rivet will be right here because it turns into A5s more forward. And I'd like to leave no more than two holes next to each other 
In other words, to keep everything nice and tight by using plenty of Clicos. Now we have finished all of the A5 rivets, L angles, Z angles, diagonals, and we can now flip it over and continue. Now we're going to prepare to install the tail skid component right before installing our forward large tail frame. This is the large tail frame. This will be the top. Now down here at the bottom, we have a series of holes, and that's for this gusset, F70-1. And it is also pre-drilled and will fit just like this, following all of the holes underneath. And then we have the weldment with the threaded component that will stick below the fuselage floor. And that will fit right here. Even with the bottom. And all of the holes will also match up. So we're going to rivet the weldment and the reinforcing gusset to our forward horizontal tail frame component. And then we can install this in the rear fuselage. Now we're at the very back end of our fuselage bottom and there's two sets of holes, one here and one here. This is the overlap of the two skins. This is where our forward horizontal tail frame is going to go and we need to create a hole for the tail skid mount and we have our template here. This template can be clicoed in place and two of the holes match up. And then we need to drill the four small holes here and the one large one for the threaded rod at that location. And we'll do that after clicoing this in place. And we'll drill these five holes right now. Here we have the holes drilled. And we have removed the template. And now we can install the frame. And the holes will line up along the bottom and here. And we will clico this in place and then install the rear frame. And the rear frame will go along these holes here and we'll clico this in place. And then we can rivet, and we'll rivet along the bottom only with the appropriate rivet. And here we have both frames riveted in place. And I have also finished riveting the bottom, leaving open the very rear section, which we do not rivet at this time. With the fuselage now flat on the table, face up, we direct our attention to the rivet line just in front of the hatch. And here, we're going to place our rear jump seat channel. This is F33-1, and it will go along the row of holes just in front of the channel. And the top flange will face to the rear and we'll clico this in place. We're not going to deal with the pulleys on the back side until later when we string the actual cables. Here's the front channel, F34-2, and the face is the side opposite where the flanges are bent towards. And on there we're going to put our doubler which will match up exactly. 
and we'll Clico and rivet this. Now there's certain holes where we don't want the rivets to go and I'll mark those off after I rivet them because we have some fairings that will go on both sides and we, we want to leave those holes open. And you can see the holes we left open. This fair lead will go on the other side, but that's its position. And this one here will also go on the other side. And we'll use AN3 hardware, nuts and bolts, to attach that. And then our bearing block for the torque tube is going to be going right here using these four holes like that. This will be a temporary installation here or leave it off because we need to first install the torque tube later on but this is the location where this will go. And here is on the back side with the fair leads installed and on the front side we can go ahead now and Clico this in place. And here is the front channel Clicoed in place. And now we want to Clico the bracket for the flat motor into its location by simply matching up the holes on the floor of the fuselage bottom with the weldment itself. And then we have two L's, F40-3, at the very front. And we will Clico these in place. And note that they also have a connection here and here. To the doubler. Now we're going to rivet all of the remaining channels underneath. The one area that we do not want to rivet at this time is anything at the very front, the, that very front row. We'll leave these open. Just about everything else though we will now rivet from the bottom, so we're going to flip it over. And we want to support this adequately, and now we can rivet from the bottom. Eventually, we'll have to get the Clicos out that we still have on the top, but for now, we can start riveting. And we have the bottom all riveted. And we can begin now with one of the sides. So we'll set aside this panel and bring out the components for the sides.